Well, good day, my friends. It's your old pal, Jordan the Lion. How are you all doing today? I hope you said well. Today, we are in Alton, Illinois, and you're wondering, what is rocking with Robert? Well, I'm gonna tell you who Robert was. Robert was just Robert around here, but we knew him as the Alton Giant. Days with Jordan the Lion, it begins now. So here it says, walking in someone else's footsteps. And that is because the world's largest man in history was from Alton, Illinois, Robert Wadlow. When he died, his shoe size was 44, uh, actually over 44. Here it says, my first step so far away, guided by hands from above. And it actually guides you over to the Robert Wadlow statue in the middle of the campus right over here. So this was one of the passion vlogs that Scott really wanted to do. Scott Michaels, dearly departed online, is traveling with me on this, and I wanted to do it too because Robert Wadlow is such an enigma to me. I mean, this is a guy who was literally the largest man in the world. I mean, people talk about Andre the Giant being big, but Robert was way over a foot taller than Andre ever was. Robert only lived to be 22 years old, and at the time of his death, he was eight foot, 11 inches. I mean, can't you just, can't we just call it nine? <laughs> he was, when you hear all the stories, everybody that knew him, happy guy. You never saw him without a smile on his face. He, he never saw him as self as the world's largest man. He was just Robert from Alton. He loved to, when he was a kid, he loved to play baseball, basketball, football, sports. He was a boy scout. And unfortunately for him, even though he was bigger than everyone, I mean, when, by the time he went into kindergarten, he was five foot one. He was taller than all of his teachers. And in fact, I believe when he was 12 years old, a championship boxer came for a fight in St. Louis. He was like six five. And they did this little like gimmick where he and Robert were acting like they were gonna fight, and Robert was even bigger than him. So you can imagine how it would have been difficult to not let that affect you. You know, people treating you different. He never, never let him treat himself different. He was a happy guy, and even though, like I said, he loved basketball, his basketball coach said, we just couldn't let him play. He said, for one thing, he was, he was so big, we were afraid he'd get hurt. And two, he said, we actually took him to every, game that we played because we were hoping in every town maybe we could find shoes that would fit him and we finally found shoes that could that he could play in but by that time the season was over so he was a boy scout eventually the end of his life i mean he only lived to be 22 he was even a mason and he had the largest ring of any mason ever he had a 24 size ring when the average ring size was like an eight so there he is smiling proud Alton resident and then memorializing him here in town you see over here it says Robert Pershing Wadlow Alton's gentle giant was born here February 22nd 1918 he lived most of his life in Alton where he attended Alton High School and shirt sure left college now the campus of SIU dental school At the age of five Robert was five six and wore clothes that would fit a 17 year old. And by the age 10, Robert was 6'5 and weighed over 200 pounds. Robert was the largest boy scout in the world. At age 13, he was 7'4. Robert was the tallest man who ever lived. Upon his death on July 15, 1940, oh, he was 8 and 11, point one. <laughs> Okay, we'll give him that point one, And weighed 490 pounds. Robert Wadlow is a significant part of the history of Alton. He was a well-traveled ambassador for our city, active in the community and religious organizations. He was known for his positive attitude and gentle manner. The statue was erected by Alton Godfrey Rotary. Nice, that's great that they acknowledged him. And then over here, because he was so big when he was in school, they had to have custom desks and he had to have custom chairs. And this is a replica of his uh, chair. Let's go sit in that. It says, he visited Virginia on an advertising campaign 
and the president of Galaxy Furniture, Saul Robert, was so taken with the apparent discomfort he experienced when sitting in a chair of normal size that he decided to build a chair to accommodate Robert's unusual frame. The exposed parts of the original chair were made of solid black walnut with the exception of the back posts which were made of southern red gum. Eleven yards of wine colored brocatel were used for the coverings of this chair. It was used by Robert in his home until his death. The time the chair was given to the Franklin Masonic Lodge. I think we should sit in that chair. All right. I'm feeling around, I'm feeling around just so you get the depth perception of how big this thing really is. Whew. Now I want to walk over here because the home that Robert was born in, they've actually moved over to the campus right beside where his statue is. And he was the oldest child of his parents. His parents found out when he was 12 that it was a pituitary issue and that was producing basically hormones that would consistently make him grow up until the day he died he was growing. But this is the house he was born into. They've moved over here. It was over on Monroe Street originally and what's interesting is that I told you Robert was just Robert even though he was big Everybody in town treated him normal. They were, you know, they may like to joke with him and he, he never took it personal. He loved to joke with people and he liked to take their hats off and put them on chandeliers and everything, but he also had a lemonade stand as a little kid. Imagine, he was born in this house. His parents did eventually have siblings for Robert, but um, when they found out what the issue was, the doctors basically said, you know, we could do a surgery but we can't guarantee that, you know, that he would survive. And his parents were very religious, so his parents decided to literally just leave it in God's hands and let nature take its course, which is pretty much what happened. Robert ended up dying at the age of 22, but I'll wait till we get out to his gravesite and tell you what exactly happened. So if you go up here close enough, you can see somebody's removed the house numbers, but they we're right there. And right now there's really nothing inside. They're in the process of renovating this, which is kind of strange because they moved this on September 11th, 2001. Baby Robert would have went through that doorway, can you imagine, before they ever had any idea what his life would have in store for him. So let's see if I walk up here, stand on the platform, how tall I am to Robert. Not very tall. So right here from the statue, right directly back there is where his house is that they moved. Robert Pershing Wadlow. Now I want to show you what's right across the street from the house and the statue. It's it actually plays a big part in Robert's life, at least from when he graduated high school. Now this is the Southern Illinois University School of Dental Medicine, but when Robert was alive, this was Sertleff College, and that's where he actually went to school for a little while. What did he want to do with his life, you might wonder? He wanted to be a lawyer. So we've made it over to Milton Elementary School. This is where Robert went to school all the way up till he was six, in sixth grade. So you can imagine how much taller he would have been than everyone else. I mean, if he came in at over five feet tall into just kindergarten and then was taller than all of his <laughs> teachers, pretty amazing. Can you imagine? They said he tried to make himself exactly like every other kid, but there was a really great um, video that you can find where, I don't know why they're doing it, but they're out here. They actually have him right here. And there used to be like a, like a spouting kind of thing, like a drain coming down here. Because you can match up all these rocks and the bricks and that window. And Robert's standing right here with a bunch of his classmates. He's towering over them. And that's where he's saying, My name is Robert Wadlow. I live in Alton, Illinois. 12 years old. And these are 
I'm surrounded by my peers. He's showing how much bigger he is than the other kids. And then he ends up by saying, when he grows up, he wants to be like Lindy so he can get a plane that big, plane big enough for him. And what do you know? The doors are open. Don't you think we should walk into his school? Just to see? Now, since he was born in 1918, he would have been going to school here in the 1920s. That's probably original. And for sure he would have climbed those steps at some point in his life. Since this is the way we came in, and the video was taken right outside this, you know he would have taken these steps at one time. Probably when it was still comfortable to walk. So other things that Alton is known for, other than all the dead bugs on my windshield, is it was one of the stops in the Lewis and Clark Trail, and President Lincoln and Douglas had their last presidential debate, and they actually have statues where that took place in town. Oh yeah, and there's Scott Michaels of Dearly Departed, the man that made this one happen. He really wanted to come here, and I said, I wanted to go there too, but... He really wanted to come here, so he made it happen. To see the gentle giant of Elton, Illinois. So this, on Sanford, and it actually looks like nobody's living here anymore. This is the last home of Robert, Robert Wadlow. Now, basically what he did was, I mentioned that he had went to college. He wanted to do pursue law and be a lawyer. But his, they speculate that his family was on hard times with money. And so his father, took Robert to the International Shoe Company, which was also Peter's, and would um, would ask if they could use Robert for any kind of job. Basically what they wanted to do, I think, was um, he was trying to get him to be like a spokesperson or something, and they did like the idea because of how big Robert's shoes were, and actually his dad was just originally trying to get, ask them if they could make Robert some shoes that would fit him and then pitch them the idea of maybe him being a spokesperson and they did think about it and they used him lightly and then they saw how much people liked him when they were on the road and actually if you look through the glass they have a no trespassing sign but if you look through the glass up here there's a big Robert Wadlow inside there <laughs> looking at us so it's definitely his house but um yeah, so he ended up getting hired full time by the shoe company to be a spokesman and to travel around. And, um, and he, he also worked for Barnum and Bailey, but he didn't like it. They were treating him more like a sideshow. So he only did that for a summer and then went back to college. But his main job was working for Peter's shoe company and he would travel around. His dad would spend about 15 minutes, he would travel with him 15 minutes in front of a crowd telling him what it was like for Robert growing up and everything. And then people could take photos with Robert. And they said Robert had a great like sense of humor about everything. The only thing he didn't like was when they would be guiding him somewhere, his father would have him by one hand and the person who traveled with the shoe company would have Robert by the other hand and they would be trying to make him through a crowd. People would either pinch Robert or kick him or do something like that, something very mean. Just um, those kind of things he didn't like, but he said he never faulted the people because he said those are just, th that's just on them being an unhappy person or being miserable and taking it out on me, so. Oh, I guess actually they don't have a no trespassing sign, so maybe I will show you this. Here. You can see they're remodeling it in some way, but there's Robert. Waving at us. 
Now I was able to find where Robert used to go on double dates with people and he did love women and everything. And they said to his credit, he never took advantage of his fame or anything like that to get women. But he was always, one person actually described him said, if you ever wanted the perfect son or husband for your daughter, Robert Wadlow was that person. And that would have been the last family home. Wonder what room it is and I wonder if they might be turning it into a museum now, if maybe that's the plan. I know this is a big, big thrill for Scott. He, he really likes Robert Wadlow. He was telling me, he said, can you just imagine how hard he would have wanted to just be like a normal child, a normal boy, and would always be bigger than everyone, would always have trouble, you know, when he traveled, always being too big for everything always standing out and yet he never let that affect his life. Pretty remarkable guy. One of the great things about Robert was that he loved kids. They said that when uh, when he would be out doing tours and things, he would spend his free time insisting on going and visiting kids in hospitals and donating his time to visit children because he saw how happy they were to see someone his size. So here is the hometown funeral home that took care of Robert's burial and everything and the sad part of it is that you know Robert at the time of his death was just under 500 pounds and he was almost nine feet tall he couldn't just be transported any way he had passed away in Michigan so the funeral home here actually went and picked up his body in Michigan and brought it back here they made a 10 foot redwood casket for Robert to be buried in casket itself weighed 500 pounds, Robert weighed 500 pounds, so normally it takes six pallbearers to carry the casket, but in this case they said there was 18 pallbearers. But this is where he was so beloved in town, so many people came to visit and say goodbye to Robert Wadlow before he was laid to rest. So here is the Upper Alton Cemetery where Robert Wadlow is buried. Here he is right on the corner with his family. You can see Addie and Harold Wadlow right here. Those were his parents. Harold, his father, was the one that used to take him to all of the events when he was representing the shoe company. And you'll see his father was a Mason, Freemason. Robert also was right at the end of his life. And here he is. Now I had read, I don't know if this is true, that the family ended up having his casket put into cement so that no one would ever try and dig him up as a curiosity. Sad they would have to do that, but I understand for sure. It just says at rest. Doesn't say world's tallest man. Doesn't say anything like that. No notoriety or anything. But there's the family plot. This was his younger brother Eugene. And I know he had two sisters. I'm not sure if that's one of the sisters or if that's the wife of Eugene. So what ended up happening is he was off doing a, I believe it was a National Forest Festival gathering in Michigan and they had recently um, adjusted the fittings on his leg braces. That was one of the things, you know, they, um, he did have leg braces but people used to constantly run up and kick him in the shins to see if they were stilts, to see if they were real legs. And um, so they had adjusted his his braces because he was ever growing like I said even up till the day he died he was still growing they'd adjusted them and made them too tight so he was walking around developed a blister and didn't notice it and then when he did notice it he just all of a sudden started telling the the man with the shoe company they were traveling around with he said he wasn't feeling well and um, for a couple of days he hadn't been feeling well and then finally Robert's father said Robert isn't gonna 
go out and talk today. He's not going to perform today. Something's really wrong with him. We need we need to see a doctor. So they ended up taking him to the hospital. He had had to have a surgery, had blood transfusions, and was in there for almost two weeks when um, when he unfortunately passed away in the morning of July fifteenth. Age of twenty-two years old. Can you believe it? He had to be in so much pain, but to think of how much living he did in just 22 years, unbelievable. Rest in peace, Robert. And they have a great museum with a lot of his artifacts here in town, but for some reason the museum is still temporarily closed. We had called, we've tried to reschedule this for a couple days, hoping that maybe they would get back to us and that they would be open, and we went today and they were still closed, so maybe that's a future trip, is to see his belongings, they have his graduation robe which i think was 20 yards or 11 yards of fabric i forget it was a lot of fabric just to make that and they have like some of his furniture i think they have his childhood desk and things like that so pretty great to come out and see where robert wadlow lived and here in front i just noticed that that is i believe that was the youngest of their sons harold jr so he would have been alive to know Robert as well. Robert was the oldest. All right, my friends, we're going to call it a day. I want to thank Elaine and John Brassard for becoming my newest Patreon. Thank you all for watching. I hope that you'll dive into a little bit of the life story of Robert Wadlow. He's a pretty fascinating guy. He's not just the world's largest man, the world's tallest man. He is that. But when you start to read about who he was as a person, I think it's pretty uplifting and pretty enlightening of how a gentle giant, someone who is probably the easiest person to make a joke at or to haze or to make fun of in any way, how he was able to all just to let it f fly right off of his shoulders and never let it bother him and it didn't affect his life. So thank you all for watching. See you all next time from somewhere else in the world. Have a great night and goodbye.